And we are live. JT here. Welcome to The Huddle. The Huddle is where I sit down with successful people from the world of sport and coaching. It's to learn more about their journey to greatness. Why do I have these conversations? Because success always leaves clues. I want to take a moment to thank you, whether you are watching live as we stream into our Facebook community, whether you're watching the replay on YouTube or on Facebook, or whether you're listening to the audio on the recording. Thank you so much for being here with me and my special guests today. And I want to share with you a reminder. The mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's wide open. And my challenge to you is to keep your mind wide open. And I guarantee you, you'll gain a valuable nugget of wisdom that will most importantly help you succeed in life. I've been looking forward to my conversation with my special guest today. He's doing some amazing things in the world, both on the football field and off the football field. And I really want to bring him on because I feel he can really give us a lot of insight and again, to share some valuable nuggets of wisdom. My guest today, okay, is a multi-passionate, right? He, he's the creative director of Saks for Racks, okay? He also with uh, Black Star Properties and he is a multi-time um, all-star, right? Uh, multiple with the Edmonton Elks in the Canadian Football League. My guest in the huddle today is Kwaku Boateng. How are you today, brother? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on the show, JT. Oh, you know, my pleasure, brother. Before we get started, I just want to uh, share with you that one of the things I, I constantly remind myself, which is a daily practice of mine, is to count my blessings. Mm. And what I feel so blessed for is, is to be here that you're able to join us today. And the reason I find it so important is because I believe that our time and energy is the most important resource we have. So thank you for choosing to invest some time into energy into being here with me and our community today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we'll get kicked off, brother. So I'm curious, what is a interesting fact? You know, I had a coaching colleague that once said, we all have our quirks. Mm that maybe a lot of people don't know about you that you'd be open to sharing with our community? Uh, that, that's an interesting question. I think that a lot of people, um, when they when they haven't met me or went, or even if they just get a first impression um, or they see me on social media, they might think that I'm more so of a, um, like more, more so detached from people or whatnot, or more so, of a, I hate to use the word jock, but um, once they once they start get, getting to know me, it's more so like there's not much ego to it. It's more so just um, I want to get to know you as much as you want to get to know me. And more importantly, um, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a I wouldn't say I'm a geek or a nerd, but I like to yeah. learn. You know I mean, I like I'm curious. Okay. You know, what I mean, I want to know more. So um, there's more to football in every sense to me. It's about me just learning, and football is just one of the avenues for me to learn. You know, what I mean, to learn something new. Um, and embrace it. So I think my quirk is that, you know, I, I think, um, especially when I put glasses on, I'm more so a geek or a nerd because okay. I like to absorb so much knowledge. So that's probably my answer. Okay. Well, it's interesting, right? You talked about it, right? Like that lifelong learner, right? Is, is often a word that gets used, but, you know, I can definitely, you know, observe from you, you know, just watching you, seeing what you're putting out there, what you're creating in this world that you can definitely tell you have this passion to learn to grow and, and to be better on a daily basis. So uh, I acknowledge you for that, brother. 100%. Yeah, I think that that's what it comes down to. You know what I mean? Each, people think that's the studying stops at school or high mm -hmm. school or college or university. Mm -hmm. I think that for you to be successful or even for you to be um, open-minded and happy in this life, you have to continuously challenge yourself and find new avenues to find that happiness that, you, that we all want and then want to enjoy. Love those. Love those simple reminders. So I'm, I'm curious, brother, you know, you, you've had a successful career as an athlete, right? You're still doing it today, right? And, and you've been a high performer at multiple levels, right? From high school through university to now doing it at the professional level. 
So I'm curious, what has been the biggest lesson that sport has taught you that you still find yourself applying to your life today? I think the biggest thing with sports is that right off the bat, you realize that you got to sacrifice. Um, you got to sacrifice and you got to persevere. So um, for me personally, in high school, I wasn't a very sought out sought out after athlete because I've always wanted to play soccer. And it wasn't until um, a good family friend of mine, um, Ryan O'Fay, he, he reached out to me in grade nine. And he was like, dude, you got to come play football. And I tried it for the first time that I met coach Joe Luciani, um, RIP to him. Um, and he made me play uh, defensive end instead of wide receiver like I did in, in the previous year. So right off the bat, you realize that things in life, it's, yeah, you yeah you feel like you're free and you have options, but sometimes you gotta you you gotta take sacrifices. You gotta you gotta listen to your superiors. You gotta listen to your mentors, and I think that that's what sports allows people to to learn and grow from. It's that it's not always about you. You know, what I mean, you gotta sometimes compromise. You gotta sometimes see the perspective of other people for you to be successful. And I think that uh, going through high school, not being sought after, and then going to university and having that same experience when I went pro um it reestablished the fact that you need to be able to persevere in order to be successful period because there's gonna be obstacles there's gonna be people that say you can't do something that you want to do but you gotta have that perseverance to do it and then the thing that attaches itself to perseverance that uh is the point that um you gotta sacrifice because i can want something all i i can have a dream or a desire to have something become the best professional athlete i can be um and persevere all through all the obstacles but at the end of the day if I don't sacrifice anything like whether it's me sacrificing so much social time do you dur during university so I can focus on my school and football um if you don't do those things you're not gonna be able to be, do great on on the field or off the field and same thing applies in that when you become a pro you got to sacrifice staying up at night and watching tv or playing video games you know what I mean you got to go to bed a bit earlier you got to wake up at six in the morning so I think it's a balance of finding um discipline finding um perseverance finding sacrifice and you're going to find those things all those things naturally throughout your journey if you do want to be successful so i think that uh that's what it really comes down to is just you got to be willing to persevere but more importantly you got to be willing to sacrifice bad habits in order for you to um attract new things greater things you got to just believe it and believe in yourself i love that and a couple of things came up for me as you were sharing there you know, one of the things when I asked you, you know, what's, what's one word that you would say best sums up your journey to greatness? You talked about perseverance and that word came up multiple times. And I love how you shared, you know, that idea. And I, I think it's very often where we look at someone, right? Like someone can look, you go, oh, you know, Quaker, he's, he's, he's got all these gifts. He's got something, you know, that all, all these, you know, he's, he's just lucky, he's fortunate. But really, like you said, it's anyone is able to be great. The question always comes down to, are you willing to pay the price exactly. to be great, right? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to, to sacrifice something of lesser value to achieve and receive greater, more abundance, more prosperity? And I think that that simple reminder is powerful for how to be great in any area of life, football, you know, financially, health, relationships. So I, I really love that. 100%, 100%. And that's, and that's the biggest challenge for us being, uh, us being conscious human beings, we gotta, we gotta fight uh, the devil. And when I say the devil, I don't mean you know, the creepy dude in the basement. I mean, just anything that's not serving you in a positive way. Yeah. Um, as much as it might feel good, or it might be, it might feel feed your ego, you gotta think deeper than that. You gotta think, okay, will this actually help me attain my goal? And you won't know that until you set goals. Because once you set goals, now you know, okay, where you, where you got to go. It's kind of like my dad always says, it's kind of like driving a car without a GPS, without a map. Yeah, yeah, sure, you can drive. Yeah, you can be a nice, fancy car. But then if you're not, if you don't know where you're going, yeah. you're not going anywhere, right? Even though you might be motion, the motion might be flowing. You might be moving, all that, but you're not going anywhere. And if you are going to work anywhere, you might be going the wrong way. Okay. So, so I'm curious, as I, as I shared with you before we hopped on here, you know, one of the interesting parts of your story, again, you know, as you dive deeper, as you really get to learn people's story, you know, I was reading this article this week that talked about, you know, in preparation for the 2017 draft, that you started off the year a little bit higher, and then over the process, all the way down to draft day, right, you fell on draft boards. 
But I think what really spoke to me was how you chose to respond, how you chose to persevere and really turn that perceived barrier actually into a blessing. So I'm curious, like in that process of going from, you know, here to falling a little bit and then rising even greater, what was that process like for you? Um, to be honest, it was, uh, it was stressful, man. Um, especially when you go from having a pretty, pretty strong university career and coming into the first scouting bureau as the number two uh, prospect in the country, only behind uh, an old army that's playing in the States, I think at Mississippi State or whatever. So a good reputable school. Um, so you feel on top of the world when you get that announcement. And then for you to fall all the way down to, I think I fell down to the 41st pick for that draft. Um, it definitely hurts your ego. It definitely bruises your ego. You know what I mean? So I think at that point, I had to make a decision. I, I was blessed with being able to be a good academic off the field. So I always had options to go in the business world and, you know what I mean, find careers in that space. But I always felt like that, that I might be cheating myself or I might be quitting because the, the circumstances have changed now. I'm not the all glamored up Kwaki Boateng second overall or first overall. I'm now, you know, the less speculated, the less interested Kwaki Boateng that might make a team now. Right. And that's kind of the, the, how media was shaping it. And I was like, Hey, what, what do I really want to do? Do I want to um, move on because I want to move on into the accounting space, into the finance space, or am I moving on to that space because I'm scared to fight this obstacle. I'm scared to fight this new challenge that's presented itself that I didn't predict that I couldn't foresee. And I'm glad that I ultimately leaned on um, mentors, close friends of mine and realized that it was just ego. Um, I'd rather been drafted earlier, but it is a great opportunity for me to ride with a chip on a bigger chip on my shoulder and prove yeah. everyone, prove everyone wrong. And that was my drive. It was like, okay, yeah, I know I'm great, but now it's like, okay, you guys tick me off so much now that I want to show you guys how great I am and show it off to you guys each and every game. And um, I think once you have that mentality of don't don't take no as an answer, especially when other people are sending your own restrictions take that with a grain of salt and refocus on what your goal is. And my goal is will always be great. So I couldn't shy away from an opportunity where greatness was running away from me. I had to go capture that. And that's how I saw it. And I'm grateful that I landed on a team with Edmonton that uh, had a GM that believed in me, had a, had a DC that believed in me, had a coach that believed in me. And without them, I don't know how far I would have been without them. So I appreciate them. I appreciate all the coaches that have been there to help me out. But ultimately it comes down to, perseverance and sacrificing mm -hmm. uh, making the greatest sacrifice and leaving my my brothers and my mom my dad to come up all the way west where i've never been and just saying you know what i'm just gonna hustle and work my hardest because if mm -hmm. i fail i haven't failed because at least i know i tried my hardest and it just didn't work out and then i would have went into accounting or finance but it didn't went that it didn't go that way thankfully mm -hmm. you know it, it's it's amazing and and i love how you again that that word came up about sacrifice and, and what I often like related to sacrifice, it's like spring cleaning, right? It's like you have to give away some of the old clothes, the old possessions in order to make room for new stuff. So, so, I, so I really love it. And, you know, the other part I loved about what you shared is that you challenged yourself to ask yourself a tough question. And I'm a firm believer, whether it's, you know, I, I take a look at my own lived experience, whether it's working with my clients, that high performers have this harmony between being able to be tough on themselves, but not too tough, right? Because again, it's that fine line between where you can sort of say, okay, like you need to step up versus totally, you know, becoming a punching bag for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, like, is that ability to challenge yourself to, to love yourself tough. Was that something that you've always done? Is that something that was taught to you? You mentioned great mentors and coaches in the past. Like, uh, you know, has that always been a part of you? Yeah. And I think that is just a product of the environment I was in. Um, my dad came out to Ghana when he was 24, uh, entrepreneurial spirit, wanted to find new pastures in life and um, pretty much just just find new ways to enjoy this life. You know what I mean? Enjoy the family that he'll have in the future. 
And then um, I think about five, six year, years later, he found my, he met my mom at church in Ghana. And then a few years later, I was born. So um, I moved out here when I was two and a half. But my family, we lived in Toronto, um, probably not the best area, but my parents are working their tail off now. You know what I mean? Uh, and just seeing them struggle, seeing them go through a harder, harder life because of possibly because of me and also just because of, you know, a shift between um, going from one nation to another nation and realizing there's a whole different set of rules, a whole another way of, you know, I mean, it's hard to make money. So my parents are working either um, two or three jobs. And just seeing that hustle, even as a kid, it's hard not to see it because you're not going to see your parents as much. You might be with a nanny, you might be with your aunts or someone that you call an aunt. So you're going to have to find ways to um, take care of yourself in a way. Obviously, you have your family, but you kind of have to, you're going to have to be okay with being alone sometimes, right? And I think that just going through that experience of my family bouncing to different areas in the GTA, right? Uh, and also, uh, and then ultimately we settled down in Milton in 27, 20, 2007. So when I was in grade seven, but before that, it was a lot of bouncing around, a lot of uh, financial stress, a lot of issues where it was just like, um, as a kid, you you can't ignore that, right? Um, and I think that that just strengthened me to a point where I realized that in this world, for you to be successful, you got to work hard. Right. Regardless of, situa- regardless, regardless of the environment that you're in, whether you're in the low class, middle class, high class, you got to work hard if you want to be successful. And just seeing my parents do that and lead the example, once we were able to um, move to Milton, find foundation, find uh, they all found jobs that they can be secure at and feel comfortable. You know, what I mean, by then I already had this notion in my head that I got to work hard for every penny. I got to work hard because I feel like I'm broke. You know what I mean? Even now I, I act like I'm broke. You know what I mean? And you'll, ha- you'll, ha- you'll hear rappers that grew up in like um, extreme poverty and they'll have millions of dollars. I'm like, no, I still feel broke. And I don't think it's, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's a desire for money. It's more so of a desire of, I don't want to fail. You know what I mean? But I do think there is just happy medium of finding, you don't want to punch your, you don't want to make yourself punchy bag. But you also don't want to make yourself too much of a delicate flower, right? Yeah. You want to find this happy medium. But I would argue that you want to go closer to always testing yourself, always pushing yourself, because the opposite is um, you're going to get trampled on. You know what I mean? You, this world is a tough world to be in. So I think that to answer your question, I think it really just stems back from my childhood, just seeing my parents struggle in certain situations and realizing that, one, I want to be the solution. And two, realizing that the solution is just hard work. And seeing them go from moving from Ghana to Canada, getting multiple jobs, a failure and success, and then moving to Milton where everything was more cohesive, more stable. It was like almost like seeing a full journey, right? You're seeing your parents struggling and you're seeing them find success. It gives you more motivation as a youth to be like, okay, yes, even if I do go through hard times, I know that as long as I keep working hard and I stick to family, I stay loyal, everything will be fine in the end. So that's what I've just been based off. And I feel like uh, I'm a bit, I'm a bit tougher now through that, yeah, but I think that yeah. that's, that's the only way to be in this life. You know, I appreciate you sharing and, and, and giving some context about your upbringing. And what resonated with me was, again, my parents both immigrated to this country as well, right? And, you know, they coming to a country where you don't really know anyone and you're having to start fresh, right? Create a new, like you said, I, I also spent a lot of time being taken care of by my grandparents, right? Spending a lot of time to myself. And the interesting thing is now that I have kids, I realized that I, I, there were some moments growing up where I kind of felt like I, I wish my parents were around, right? Like you, mm-hmm. you just see other people, right? And, you know, my parents weren't always able to come to games or, or things like exactly. that. But I, yeah. but I've learned that it sort of taught me, it put me in an environment to realize that no one's coming to save you, right? Like you have to take responsibility. And, and it taught me about the importance, like you said, of ambition and drive and, and the ability to get up and be energized and enthused and get after it. And I almost find it's the opposite now, right? I almost need to cool the jets. I need to harness the ambition and drive. I need to force and challenge myself to take a break on a Saturday to just be with my kids. But I feel like I would much rather have to 
I, I would often say this, I would much rather tame a tiger than to train a pussy cat. Mm, mm, that's fine. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, so 100%. 100%. Okay. 100%. So, so I'm curious, you know, you, you've talked about this idea of sacrifice, perseverance, like getting up and getting after it. You know, one of the things that really drew me to you is like, you're, you're sharing a message that goes beyond the football field, right? Like you're a multi-passionate entrepreneur. You have multiple successful ventures. How have the, how have those lessons of sacrifice perseverance served you as you've started to apply your understanding of business and, and creating these uh, other opportunities to serve people? How, how has that served you? I started to realize that the business world is a bit easier than, than, than being a pro athlete. Um, <laughs> and I think there's a lot of similarities to it. Um, yeah. I think that uh, business, and this might be a bit more of a, uh, this is my personal opinion, but I feel like business is no different from um, historical war in the sense, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where, uh, you know, now and back in the day, you know, you'd probably have swords and gunfights and whatnot. Now, now today we just sue each other. But I think that it's more so business <laughs> is you got to have a certain mentality in business, right? Uh, because or else you're going to be taken advantage of. So in business, I think that one of the best ways for you to equip your mind is just to read about what you want to dive into. Read a lot about it. Get mentors in the field already. That's, those are your cheat codes. You know what I mean? Those are your clues, your blues clues. Get all that stuff taken care of. Um, and then I'll let, and then why I feel like once you play a sport, kind of kind of going back to what I said before, was that when you play a sport, you have to be disciplined to be successful. You have to be okay with getting an obstacle in front of your face and hurtling over it and, or, you know, I mean, not avoiding it, but hurtling over or going through it. And if you have those characteristics already into your DNA, business is, is easy. The hardest part might be your accounting. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it really comes down to the same fundamentals. You're going to have a great idea, right? And you're going to have to show the world that why it's a great idea. And some people are going to tell you the exact same thing they're going to tell you in sport. Oh, you're not good enough to do that. You're not, you're not smart enough to do that. Oh, no, no. We'd rather have someone else play that position or rather have someone else do that. Oh, no, we already found someone. And you're going to have to take that negative, not negative, but criticism and decide what to do with it, whether it breaks you or whether it makes you. So I think that once you have the mentality through sport that nothing can stop you besides yourself, then business is just way easier. Because in football, when I say you can't stop me, there's an old lineman there that says, no, I can stop you. I'm going to punch you in the face each and every time. In business, you're not getting punched in the face. In business, you're not getting cut. In business, you're not going to get body slammed. In business, right, it's all writing. It's all uh it's all thought process it's all communication it's a lot easier from a physical tangible point of view than playing a sport so i've always seen it as how i see football and specifically it's like playing in traffic so if i can get used to playing in traffic then the business is nothing business yeah. business is nothing all it, all it is is just i carry on that same philosophy perseverance and then any, anything is possible so i think that uh playing sports has given me it gives you a confidence eludes this type of energy inside you that you're like oh okay so this is this is a governing law okay how, how do I get around it how do I who do I speak to you know what I mean because you have that confidence you have that um that that drive that ambition that's already instilled with you in, in football mm-hmm. at least if you or in sports at least if you're passionate about the sport you just transfer that those same characteristics over to business and then it's the same opponents they just look different yeah you know, it's interesting. And, and what I really heard from you, I, a couple things. One, I love how you reframe things, right? Like you, you know, you literally say, if I can, if I have the courage to go on the football field and play and literally play in traffic, then the business world's easy, right? Like, it's almost like you remind yourself that your power, your, your power to create always starts with it. Like, that's what I love. It's empowering. And two, what, what you were talking about reminded me of something one of my great mentors told me. And he said, if you doubt anything, doubt your limits. Mm. And I remember he said that. And I was like, that's one of the best things I've ever heard. Because very often we doubt our greatness, right? We've been programmed. We've been fed these lies. The devil has told us these lies about, you know, our, this con job that we're not good enough and all this. But no, let's flip it. Let's doubt our limits. And then once you do that... It's just, then you're playing, 
with house money, right? So mm-hmm. I love that. I like that quote as well. Yeah. Okay. So I, I guess I, I'm curious. So you've been talking a lot about, you know, you've mentioned the, that mentorship, that coaching. Is that something that I guess I've just found that it's interesting how growing up, right, that we are so anyone that's played sports has been open to coaching, has been open to feedback. And it's interesting that once we transition to adulthood, life, the game of life, it's like, I I found that for some reason, uh, many people, their mind gets closed. They, they, there's this pride in figuring out yourself, like never asking for help, like this, this glorification of that from your experience, why is an open mind? Why is it so important to be coachable in in any area of life? Yeah, I think that you being coachable comes down to, I would argue, ego. Um, you just feel like that you know more than um, others. And I think that you just slowly got to open up yourself to other ideas. Because if you don't, then you risk seeing the world only through your eyes. And the issue with that is that the world doesn't, not everyone looks at the world how, how you look at the world. You know what I mean? And, and the tough thing is that no one wants to be told, especially as men, young men, no one wants to be told what to do especially as teenagers, no one wants to be told what to do, but the power of listening to someone uh, and put it in pretty much diminishing your ego, you're going to find those clues I was talking about before, because once you diminish your ego, the person that's giving you advice feels more comfortable and actually feels, they may actually feel more confident just giving you more advice because they see that you're actually, you might actually take that advice and grow it almost like a seed, them giving you a seed and you can grow it however you want to. So I think the, the biggest thing or the biggest thing you will lose from not looking at or having an open mind or looking at other people's point of view is that you'll never be able to grow. And if you are able to grow, it's going to stunt your growth because once you're able to look at other people's perspectives, you can be like, oh, maybe that's why so-and-so reacted to an experience in my past like that. Or maybe you'll go through something in the future where you're like, okay, I remember this point of view that this mentor told me this is a being applied right now. I wonder if this person is also experiencing this or you're able to kind of figure out, you're able to kind of have almost foreboding of what the hell, what's gonna happen in the future when you talk to people because you've built this repertoire of, okay, when people talk to you, you're not rejecting their thoughts and instead you're actually listening to them. And you're gonna realize that human beings were very, we're very alike <laughs> if you talk to enough people, yeah. right? So again, you're gonna create this register in your mind of, okay, oh, no, I remember feeling this emotion. I remember getting this emotion from someone else, and now I know how to react. But if you never open up your mind to other people's ideas, you'll never, you'll always be learning. You'll always be learning from your own mistakes, is what I should say, right? And you should actually just be learning from other people's mistakes. So you don't have to do that, right? And I think that once you, once you become closed-minded, you close yourself to all of the omens that the universe is trying to give you all the advice that possible mentors maybe wanted to give you. And now you're just going through life in the dark, at least with mentors, at least with open mindedness, you're going to have, yes, life is is a pathway that does seem dark, but you're going to have these little spotlights once in a while because it's, because it seems similar to you because you've already had someone planted in your mind. This is what you do when this happens or gives you advice. And I don't think you enter your, you don't open yourself up for any advice if you, if you're closed minded. So I think that the biggest thing is being open minded just allows you to solve issues before their issues or even helps you resolve issues that are current. I love what you're sharing. And, and what I really heard from you is this idea that it, it's being open to the idea that we all have our blind spots, right? It's, it, and it's just having that common confidence that, like you said, you don't have to know everything and that's okay. Yeah, totally and, fine. And it's funny that once you start to just accept it, the ego fades away and, and you start to connecting to your higher self. And once you start to realize that, you know, sort of piggybacking off we talked about last time, then all of a sudden when you open yourself up to mentors, people that are actually achieving the results that you want, it becomes like they share with you the cheat codes, the blues clues. And, and really all that it's going to do, it's going to get you to where you want to go faster, faster. and with greater ease. And, and why what is the benefit to not doing that, right? Mm-hmm. So I love everything you're sharing. 100%, yeah, 100%. I think that it, it's just a catalyst to getting to where you want to be faster. Mm-hmm. You just got to be willing to go back while saying sacrifice your ego. 
and yeah. sacrifice being being and I think it comes down to just being men um or he's taught you know not to be too vulnerable and whatnot but I think in certain 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 circumstances you got to be you got to be open because if you want to learn if you want to have that catalyst of having a mentor to push you forward you're asking them to open up their ideas so you got to give them something as well I love that. And I love just, again, your passion for mentors. And uh, what I have found, at least from my experience, is that the most successful people, the most highly effective people, they are so, they are some of the kindest people that just simply want to share. Like, and it, it, it totally blows my mind sometimes. Like, you know, people that you would think that, oh, they're going to build fences. No, like they actually want to help. They actually want to serve you because they just, they just, because their heart's into it, right? Their heart, mm -hmm. their heart simply wants to help more people. So I love that. Okay. So I'm curious, you know, um, one of the things I really have loved about, again, observing your journey is, you know, you sacks and racks. And what really caught my eye was one, I love the idea of like seeing you give back to the community, right? And it seems like community building is really important, right? Like helping serve the person you once were. Yes. You, I know there's also this giving component financially, right? Where you're giving back to community, bettering the community. I, I'm curious, what was the inspiration for you starting Saxo Rex? Yeah, and I think it came down to, so my rookie year was 2017 and I was on a two-year rookie contract. So it was 2018 that I started having a phrase in my mind. And I, I wear, uh, I, uh, I tape my, my uh, wrists before each and every game. And I like them pretty long. Um, and I just write off sacks for acts or FRR. Yeah. And before each and every game, this is my last year, my rookie contract. So before I got the big money, some would say. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so that was just my, okay, quickly, the more sacks we get, the more racks we're going to get, right? And racks are de slang for denominations of $1,000. So yeah. um, I was like, more sacks I get, the more racks I get. And then it's almost like I manifested it. And then I had a great season got the contract that I wanted. And then 2019, I said, okay, how do I take this, um, this saying on my wrist and implement it so everyone can have this, this drive, have this saying that helps them, that keeps them motivated, whether it's they're in school or doing an exam. Okay, why am I here? Okay, well, I need to get good grades so I can go to university, get these sacks for racks. You know what I mean? So um, how, do I, how do I have other crazy people say sacks for racks so I'm not the only one saying it? And so I opened up a uh, IG page and it really is really it was just um, very raw. It was about just me just opening up to the world and say, Hey, if you got a sack, whether you're in high school, preschool, university pro, send it to me, DM us and we'll post it. We'll celebrate it. And we just kept on doing that, doing that, doing that. And then COVID hit and we didn't have a football season, a CFL season. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to sit on my, my butt and just not do anything. And I'll, I'm always someone that likes to do stuff, especially in the business world. And at that time, um, at that time, I was I was thinking about maybe going to back into accounting, and even as like a side job for the off season. I said, let me put all that energy, all that knowledge that I gained from my honors BBA into my own craft. You know, I mean, something outside of football. And then I said, okay, let me start Saks Rax. And I said, okay, let me implement the same stuff that we're doing online to the physical world. And that's how we started off. That's how I started off with Camp Rush right and camp rush is basically an opportunity for me to get athletes to come and train them how to be the best the best pass rushers they can and i was like okay well it's not really about the money because i'm a pro athlete so what am i gonna do with these funds you know what i mean so these yeah. are like the logical question i'm asking myself <laughs> and i was like all right let me just give it to food bank and the food bank works perfect because um again like i said me growing up me growing up and having to see struggle or seeing and being in areas where you see other people in more in more financial distressed situations and realizing that people use the food bank a lot more than um as i get older a lot more than i ever thought i was like okay that's perfect a great way a great way for me to spend the money and donate it and more importantly it's called the food bank and we're talking about sacks for acts we're talking about money we're doing so it's like okay so we get sacks racks, we throw into the food bank, we throw into the bank. It just happens to be a food bank. So it worked out, everything worked out. So I was like, and I'm like, how much will I give them? You know what I mean? I, I was like, okay, well, sacks for racks, let's give it a rack. And at first I was like, and this is during the time where um, there's no CFL season. People are saying the CFL might never come back. 
So I'm like, damn, like, are you sure you're gonna be able to satisfy a rack every year? <laughs> and I was just like, and I just, I just felt like I had a calling, just be like, no, I'll stick to it. You know what I mean? Stick to it. Stick to it. Stick to Iraq and 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 just fortify that as the main thing. Every year we want to dedicate, we want to donate a rack. We not even donate. We, I don't want to use the word donate. We want to deposit a rack at a local food bank. And basically, 2020 was the first. Uh, Camp Rush event. It was held in Edmonton, Alberta. Huge success. Um, I took that confidence. We donated to Edmonton Food Bank. Took that confidence and said, "Okay, where next?" I went to I went to university at Wolf Laurier University, but out in Kitchener Waterloo, Cambridge. I right, let's go give them a rack. So we gave them a rack, and I said, "Okay, you know what? Let's also run a camp there." And we ran a camp. Huge success. And then this year, I said, "Okay, how can I make this just jump off the page?" Right. And we decided to make it four, four Camp Rush events throughout um, throughout Canada. And that's the goal for us to be able to provide and improve the grassroots Canadian football, mm-hmm. like throughout Canada, not just in Edmonton, not just in Ontario, throughout Canada. So the first step was for me to say, okay, can we run four different camps in, during off season? And this is the year where we're trying it. So this year where we just sold out at GSA, we just sold out, um, all of our slots for the Kitchener Waterloo Cambridge camp, camp. So the one in Kitchener, Ontario. The only other one that's available in Ontario is the Burlington one, which is close to home where um, where I went to high school and all that. Um, and then we have the Edmonton and the Calgary ones happening end of March. So I think like I'm super I'm super excited for this one because it's, it's again it goes back to what I was saying before. It's a challenge. It's something I've yeah. never done before. I went from one camp a year to four camps, right? And this year before we even announced the Camp Rush. Um, right after New Year's, uh, me and my youngest brother, we went to Burlington, we deposited another rack with the Burlington Food Bank. Um, and I think that and my brother asked me, what, what's more fun for you? The camps or like, what's the, what's the most fun part about Sacks Racks? You know what I mean? Uh, dealing with the brand management, dealing with the camps. Well, I'm like, honestly, depositing that rack and seeing the face of the, just seeing the community, like helping out the community, that's, that's the most enjoyable part of it. And it's almost like a selfish enjoyment because it's yeah. like, uh, and then that's just being me be, being honest. It's like giving back to the food bank. It's like, as if I'm helping my prior self, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm helping the person in the past. Uh, and the biggest thing that I want to do with sex Action is find a way to make it affordable. And I started realizing that just the business that I'm in now is it's hard to make it affordable because you got to, because if I want it to be a true premium brand, um, I want to rent out indoor facilities. I don't want to go to a, a random park with holes in the ground. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Money. I want it to be a premium camp. And then with COVID, I think it kind of forced my hand where I had to limit the amount of size it was. At first, I was thinking, okay, to make it affordable, we got to have a lot of people so we can drive down the price. And then, I, and then COVID hit and then changed everything, changed the way I thought about it. I had to limit it to 14 to 10. And now I, I find it as a blessing because I don't want more than 10 to 14 athletes. I want the most ambitious people in that local neighborhood to come to the camp um, and get a lot from it. We're there for three hours and, and it's a really personalized training, right? And I want to actually be able to, when, if you've seen the videos on our social media, I want to be able to call out Bryce, call out Sonny Chandler and know them by name, right? And say, okay, this Okay, this is how the drill is going to happen. Okay, I need someone to uh, be my my fake old lineman. Hey, Bryce, come on here. You know what I mean? And it allows a different level of a camp experience that I think a lot of Canadians haven't been able to experience yet because a lot of athletes, yes, we run camps, but it's a general camp. It's like old line. It's like old line and uh, defensive backs, quarterbacks. Everyone is there. We don't have many quarterback specific camps, many old line specific camps, many DB specific camps. And I think Sax Rax is one of its first. Um, and that's why I want to do such a good job with it. But the first thing I want to do was make sure that there was a component of a community outreach component, because I feel like I don't want to lose myself into too much of the racks and more about giving back the racks and making it a full circle. So that even if you can't attend the camp, there's a way for me to always give back to that community. Um, so again, it just nourishes everything, whether it's me helping out improve the Canadian, the, the grassroots Canadian football, or me just helping people feed themselves. I know I said a lot there. 
No. You just you left it open ended. You told me to talk about sexual uh, acts. So I was like, Shoot. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Once you start opening, we're just talking about sexual acts. I won't talk. You know what I love about it, though? I need to stop you, to grab it, some water. <laughs> you know what I love about it, though, is that you're so clear on what you want right? Like that was so clear. Like you could just see that it started here. This is where I want to grow. Like you can just tell your ambition and drive to grow this, make it bigger to serve, you know, more people. It, it just, I, I could feel it. And then you also have this, this beautiful balance of understanding that how it happens is none of your concern, right? Like you just have to focus your, your energy and time into getting clear around what you want. And then just by you know, as cliche as it, trusting the process, putting in the reps and sets on a daily basis, it's going to happen, right? And what I would relate it to for any of, uh, any of our athletes that are listening is, right, it's like, you have this calm and confidence about you, brother, and I'll just acknowledge you for this, that you can tell that sacks racks, it's like, I can feel like, you know, this is going to grow. It's like walking on the field going, it doesn't matter who's in front of me, I'm beating them today. Mm -hmm. and and so i just love it i just love your clarity i love the energy enthusiasm and passion you have for saxon racks i just love sh you sharing that beautiful vision with me brother thank you thank you thank you appreciate it i'm glad i didn't bore you <laughs> no I, no i can see your business i can see your business mind working there are you sure you're not i, I felt like i i would have swear that there's some marketing in there too not just accounting <laughs> <laughs> okay um, so, so I'm curious, right? Like that was actually one thing that came up when I was watching some of the stuff on the videos, I, I heard you talk about how you wanted to personalize this. You really wanted to help people, you know, feel seen, feel heard, feel appreciated, right. To yeah. build that, those connections. What has been, let's say one of your favorite experiences through the sax for racks journey? Like, has there been one moment where you go, this is why I'm doing it? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, uh, for example, one person named Jax, Jackson Lashuk, he's, uh, I think he's only, only 14. He, and he went to my camp when he was 13. Um, so he's young and just getting, and another person is Alex Sinclair out in Edmonton, Alberta, helping them. And he started when he was 14, helping them when, when they just started football and seeing them progress, that's that's the greatest dividends ever. And then on top of that, cherry on top is having the parents, not the kid. The kid will say thank you, all that, obviously, but having the parents reach out and say, we have seen a significant difference in our child, not from, yes, from the football field. And they'll, they'll tell me all the, all the great stats. So like, they'll tell me, yeah, he had four sacks. He had all of these things from this season. Thank you. Thank you. But that's not what gets me giddy. It's the part where like, we've seen a change in his behavior off the field whether it's school or whether it's just the way he interacts with life, it's like he has this new confidence or he has this new um, ability to, to, to dream. You know what I mean? And obviously as a youth, all you do is dream, but it's a, it's a difference between making it a dream and making it a reality and the difference is just planning it. And when, when, when we find, when I find emails sent to me, say, Hey, Hey, coach, but saying, um, we just want to thank you. Uh, our, like, our son is doing great on the field, but more importantly, he's taking school more seriously or he's, you know, he's just more, more involved in the community. He's doing things that, that show that he's more confident, he's more mature. And I, that's what I want because at the end of the day for us to grow as a society, a community, we got to have more young men um, understand how to, how to be great, how to help other people instead of putting each other down, you know what I mean? And not making it too, making it a toxic environment. And I think that's the battle against football. One is also the, you know, the, the, the damages to the mind and all that, uh, the evidence towards that, but it's also the tox, the toxic nature of being a football player or the the pro the the stereotype of it. And I think ways to break that is to have more of these specific positional camps or have these people go out to the communities that, whether it's another minority looking at me and say, okay, whoa, he's doing this and this and this. It doesn't matter what my situation is. I can I can aspire to be that. I can be, I can do that as well because they have something visual, tangible to relate it back to. It's not some foreign, distant um, image to them. It's something that they can see, they can touch, and that's why I try my best to to show what's happening in my business world, in my entrepreneurship. It's not about me bragging. It's more so me showing that. Listen, yes, I'm a black man doing all these things, and I'm showing that because when I was younger. I didn't feel like I had enough of those influences to grasp on, to say, yes, I can do anything I want. 
You know what I mean? It's it's better for uh, for the young men in our society to find that now, especially the minorities, to find that when they're twelve, to find that out when they're thirteen, and so when they're twenty or twenty five that they can do anything. Find that out now, so then they could change their mind um, that okay, maybe I won't take applied classes, not because I'm not intelligent enough to take the university ones, but but because I want to go play football. I want to go play, and then you know, you obviously know, you know, you being a director at. Uh, Football Ontario, you know, you know as well. The only way for Canadian players to go play football in Canada is through university. You can't go to college, right? So once we are able to switch their mind to saying, "Yes, yeah, school is important," but giving them a reason why school is important. And for some people, that 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 currency is football. You know what I mean? I'm now I'm trying to tell them, I'm trying to encourage them. Listen, football is great, <clears throat> sports is great, but we need to change the currency back to grades because once you the way I've seen it after falling in love with football is that, okay why am i taking these applied courses let me take a university let me let me actually challenge myself further you know what i mean and yes i want to play football but it opens up your mind to realize man i can play football i can play the only way i can play football is going to university man okay well if i'm already if i already want to play football and i'm ready to go to university let me take a course that's going to benefit me right and then you start realizing that in life for you to do anything great you need to work hard for right and I think that's what I'm trying to instill to these young men is that it doesn't matter whether you're implied or academic. It's more about where do you want to be in the future? If you want to play football, shoot, you're, you don't have a choice. You know what I mean? You have to go through university. You know what I mean? And if you want to be um, a great electrician, whatever it is, you have your own avenue. But at the end of the day, it's teaching these young minds that everything you want in life, you need to work for. It isn't like all of a sudden you're going to be a CEO of a company. You got to work for it. And one of the things that I was grateful to finally re- register in my mind was I'm not going to school for my parents. I'm not getting these grades for my parents. I'm getting these grades for football. And then really later on, I realized as I got older um, through high school, I was like, football's cool, but no, now I want to get these grades so I can get a scholarship to go play football on top of getting the football scholarship. So getting academic and football scholarship. And I was like, damn, that'd be nice. You know what I mean? And then once you are able to change the mindset of these young men and tell them, okay, school is not for your parents. Their grades are not for your parents. Look at them and no different as a hundred dollar bill. When you get an A plus, that's a million dollars in your bank account. You know what I mean? That's how you got to look at school. Look at school as a currency. No different from the yin, no different from the American dollar, no different from the, the British pound. It's a currency because the more currency you have at any of your high school, your, your educational career, which I would argue never ends, but <laughs> once you've done high school, you want to use that currency to deposit at a McMaster University, deposit at a U of T, deposit at a Oxford. You know what I mean? That's how you got to look at it. And uh, and and I know there's a lengthy answer to your question, but that's what I like to hear from players and their parents is my athlete now is more than an athlete. He's a student athlete now. Yeah. Again, brother, I love it. And and what I why I love it is I can feel the passion right? I can see it oozing out of you of why you're doing this. And I love, you know, a couple of things definitely came up for me. I, I love how you talked about like, one of your things is, is to encourage, right? And, and what is encourage, right? It, it's that it's, it's, it's pouring your courage, right? Into someone else, right? Having them mm-hmm. having the courage to take great action. And, and the other thing that I love that you talked about, and, and I posted something about this, is that we live in in a in a culture in an environment that has programmed us to believe that you can that life is a zero sum game right that you can only have one winner and one loser but and so what i mean by that is it's important that we need to understand that in the game of life the most fulfilled people the most successful people are ones that look to create win win wins and and i think that where i sort of challenge people is i notice this this week with Football Ontario, we released the All-Stars. And it was interesting just to observe. And, and, I, and I feel deep responsibility in my life to, to help other people understand that when you celebrate the wins of others, you're going you're gonna to open yourself up to have more wins. And in the, in the byproduct is you're going to avoid that comparison trap which is mm-hmm. going to make you feel stuck. So I just, again, it really spoke to me like these ideas of like sharing, like let's celebrate the wins, your wins. If someone is winning, celebrate them because they're just showing you what's possible, 
right? And that is encouragement that you can go do something big and great with your life. So I, I, I love that, brother. Thank you. Okay. So I got one last question. Again, I want to be respectful of your time and energy, even though I feel we could probably sit here for hours and talk. <laughs> no, so, so one of my purposes in life is I, I love showing people what's possible, right? Like when they commit to going all in, and it's easy to say you're all in, but you know, are you willing to put in the reps and sets? So I'm curious, let's say we 10 x the vision of your life, a hundred X, like, let's say there's no limits. Hmm. What does the vision of your life look like going forward? Personally, professionally, I don't know something. What's on your heart, brother? Um, I don't know, man. That's, that's a tough question. I feel like every day I want to 10 X um, something that I'm doing. Uh, so I feel like every day my aspirations are exponentially going upward. Um, I don't know. I think, I think there's a lot of different dreams and aspirations for each of my business uh, goals. Um, but mainly it's about me getting to a point where it's, it's get being stable financially. And now it's about just, just being a steward, you know what I mean? Being, 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 being in the community, being able to uh, be part of it and being part of change. And I think that uh, obviously me being a pro athlete, the money is nice, but it's more so of just, when you're able to go play for a team like Edmonton and be immersed into the culture here and be immersed into the community and realize that you can really impact people's lives. You know what I mean? Just you just being at a signing and smiling and, and signing one of their, their, their watching jerseys. They're just elated. They're so happy. You know what I mean? Doing more stuff like that, where instead of it, I always talk about Chris, but instead of, asking for money it's more so i want to have more of those opportunities where i see you smile where i see you laugh where i see you appreciate um the world that we're in that's the stuff that's going to keep me happy and i think that the only way for you to do that is for me to 10x all my other endeavors so and i think that biggest thing is that we we're, we're so fearful of it as, as a human being is so fearful of money because we think money is so evil and i think that um well my dad always said money is not the issue the issue is people <laughs> you know what i mean because anything can be used as a negative or a positive and it really comes down to if, if you're a good person whether you have money or you don't have person money if you have money or you don't have money you're still going to be a good person if you're a bad person if you have money uh you got money you're still gonna be a bad person right so that to, to, to answer your question if everything was 10x in my life i don't think i'd want anything to change like the my my philosophy at least on life i'd mm -hmm. want it to be more so okay, well, if everything is already taken care of from a financial standpoint, why aren't I more in the community? Why aren't I thinking about other ideas? Maybe I'll find ways to make sax racks more affordable or make, make, make Black Star properties um, part of a different, different platform where I'm providing more affordable homes, wherever it may be. But it goes back to just, okay, what can I give back to the world? Because I've been able to take so much from the world. What can I give back? And I think that that's the vision if I were to 10 X, everything is more so, okay, how can I leave this earth knowing that I gave everything I could to this earth before I just, you know, perished and left. And I think that part of it, as much as I want to talk about having no ego, I think part of it is ego because you do want to solidify your name. You know what I mean? And you do want people to keep talking about JT in the huddle once you're gone and you know, once you're gone and passed away. But I think that I want, I want that same acknowledgement, but from a different place in people's heart. I'd want, I'd rather have that as a more genuine, more of about, okay, yeah, Quakey tried his best to be part of the community, tried his best to make the world better than when he, when he left, or at least in his point of view, in his eyes, try his best to just give back because at the end of the day, shoot, all we, all we think about is taking and taking and taking. And I started to realize as you get older and you start going more inside of yourself, it's not about taking, if anything, it's about giving, you know what I mean? Giving it all yeah. away at the end of the day. I can 10 X, I could 20 X, I got hundred X all the, all my endeavors, but mm -hmm. I can't take anything with me. The only thing I could mm -hmm. take with me um, might be the memories, might be the feelings, all the mm -hmm. intangible stuff. You know what I mean? So I think to answer your question to 10 X everything, it would be finding more ways for me to give back and mm -hmm. find that feeling that I get when I, when I'm able to donate a rack, when I'm able to know that I'm helping out the community because that feeling is unparalleled. I agree. I, that would be a rich life, brother. 
And it's interesting, you know, I heard this sports analogy, right? You want to, when, when, when it's your final breath, it's like, no, Quake left it all on the field, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. it sounds like leaving people with the impression of increase, like leaving them off better than before you got there, that that's a big driver for you, brother. So I want to acknowledge you for that, but, you know. Thank you. So, so I'm curious, you know, what can we do to help and support you with everything that you're growing right now? Um, honestly, uh, I think it just, 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 uh, talk about it. You know what I mean? When, when, if, if you, if you find someone that's, uh, that needs some guidance or that, that reminds you of me, have them reach out to me, you know, have them DM me, whatever, reach out to me and hopefully I can get to them. Um, but realistically, there's not, the most I can ask from people or people watching or just you is just share, um, share sacks or acts, share the vision. Right. That's all I can really ask. I don't really want um, too much promotion. I really just want organic communication. You know what I mean? I want it to be like, oh, you're you're a pass rusher. Oh, I know. I know. I know a guy that runs uh, camps throughout Canada. I know a brand that does that. You know, yeah. I mean? oh, you're in you're in Alberta and you, and you look for property. You know, yeah. I know. I know a brand that does. It. It's more so just just word, you know, yeah. I mean? just 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 talk about how you truly feel about um what I'm what I'm creating and that's all I want I don't want um platform where people feel obligated to even share my yeah. my endeavors I'd rather them just be like it just comes out of the blue it just comes natural because yeah. when you when you're able to if you after this JT if you're talking to someone and you're telling a kid hey yo you got to go to sex rack blah, blah blah you just sound like a salesperson yeah you use our salesperson I don't want that I yeah. want if, you, if people are going to be on my side I want it to be seamless I want it to be like Oh well, shoot! I know a guy that that can help you out. You know what I mean, and now it's up to them to take the step themselves to actually get that help. And I think that's the biggest thing is um, there's help out there. We just need to encourage people, especially young men and especially minority young men, that you need a if you need help, don't be shy. Go get it. Go ask. You know what I mean? Um, and that's what it comes down to. I think the best way to promote me or help me out is just to carry out your own life and just whenever there's an opportunity to share, share it, but share with your honest opinion, because that's all I really want. Okay. I love it. So quick, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you. I, I want to acknowledge you for the man you are, the great son, you know, but more importantly, the great human being that you are. The one thing I've really received from this conversation is how passionate you are about learning and growing and your commitment to wanting to impact to help and serve others along their journey is it's infectious so I just want to let you know thank you like so much for sharing that and creating this space with me today brother yeah well thank you thank, it's, we need we need more more shows more podcasts like this you know what I mean where we just talk about openness you know and we just open up yeah. about and I like that. I like the idea that, you know, every successful story does leave clues. I like that a lot, especially as a kid coming from growing up on Blues Clues. I like that a lot. So okay. I appreciate you having me on the show. It's all great. So, folks, here is my challenge to you. Quaker dropped so many valuable nuggets of wisdom. But as I remind you often in the huddle that success always leaves clues. And reminder that knowledge is potential power. It's the consistent and focused application of that great knowledge that actually creates great results. So my challenge to you is to take one of these valuable nuggets of wisdom and go apply it to your life today. And what I want to remind you is you are deserving of greatness. You are worthy of greatness. You are greatness. And always, if this conversation is resonating with you and you feel compelled to share, please share it with someone, brighten their day, right? Because the more we share these conversations, the more we can encourage, the more we can elevate, the more we can empower others to go be great at the game of life. So as always, I look forward to chatting with you next time in the huddle. Have a blessed rest of your day.